Welcome. My name is Kyle Shutt with Discovery Education, and we're so excited that you can join us today. We're in sunny Arizona on an egg farm. It might not look like the farm that you're used to, or maybe it does, but we have a whole lot in store for you to learn about. In fact, with me are Clint and Charmin Hickman, and we're thrilled that you're here. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and get this started? Absolutely. This is what you're standing on is Hickman Family Farms in Arizona. Um, and we're so happy that you guys are here and so excited to show you the journey that the egg takes from the farm to your breakfast table. And we're going to take you behind the scenes to the ladies in action. Hens, of course. We're going to show you how eggs are washed, gathered, and packaged to send to customers. We're going to show you some super cool technology, and we're also going to talk about ways you can be a good egg in your community. But most importantly, we're going to answer questions from you about our farm. So let's get cracking. <laughs> get cracking. That's pretty good. Talking about being a, a good egg, I hear some jokes and some laughter here. Do you guys have any of your favorite egg jokes? You know, Charmin's the joke teller of the family. I think I'll ask her. Well, thanks. Let me explain. Okay. Uh, you know, you have to be careful when you're whacking with eggs because you could scramble them. <laughs> scrambled, scrambled eggs. Love it. Sorry. Actually, that's my favorite way to eat eggs anyway. But I, I'm glad that you put, put it off to her. We'll get you back later. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> so tell us more about this family farm because I, under, I understand it's been in the in the family for generations. Yeah, Hickman's Family Farms was uh, in my grandmother's backyard since 1944. We've been in business for 68 years now. But a lot of the egg industry are owned by family and good family farmers. Just like Clint said, our grandparents started our egg farm in 1944, and then our parents ran it for many years. And Clint and I and our brothers, Glenn and Billy, are proud to follow in our parents' footsteps, supplying fresh and nutritious eggs. And we've put together a little video with Glenn where you're going to meet the rest of our family and know a little bit more about the history of our farm. So let's take a look. Hi, I'm Glenn Hickman. I'm here with my family, my sister Charmin, my dad Bill, my mother Gertie, and my brothers Billy and Clint. Welcome to Hickman Family Farms in Arizona. We've been a family owned and operated farm since 1944. The business began when our grandparents, Guy and Nell, started selling eggs laid by hens in their own backyard. And our parents, Bill and Gertie, expanded the business with 500 hens. Our dad would work on the farm in the morning and deliver eggs in the afternoon. In the early days, one little refrigerated panel truck was big enough to deliver the fresh eggs to small grocers and restaurants in the area. Today, that one truck farm has grown into a multi-site operation based in Buckeye, Arizona. In total, the farms produce more than three million eggs each day, which are delivered fresh to grocery stores and restaurants throughout the area. We are proud to be celebrating 65 years of providing you with all natural, high quality protein eggs. Those eggs are sold under our family name, and that means a lot to us. We take pride in the process from hand to home. Thanks for visiting our family farm. Welcome back. You know, when I was putting on this suit, I felt a little bit silly, but I have to believe there's a reason we're wearing these suits. Can you tell me a little bit more about them? Well, I think we both look pretty silly. <laughs> this is a biosecurity outfit that we have on. The, the safety and health of our birds are paramount here on the farm, and this kind of is one of those things that keep them safe. Okay. Tell me more about the birds themselves. Well, first of all, did you know that a, the hen is a female chicken? And there, are, on this farm, there's three million hens uh, living, breathing, eating every day, producing eggs. Hmm. And what about how they live? Well, kids, you guys probably all live in different style of housing. You have apartments, you have condos, you, have, you live in the city, you live in the country. It's kind of the same way. Chickens live in different styles of housing. This is a conventional cage bird facility. So our chickens live in conventional cages. But other farms feature aviaries or cage-free systems or the new enrichable colony system. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a student, I couldn't wait to get out of school because I was just, I had so much energy in me and I just wanted to run around. Are there times where these hens are more active? Well, kids, I think when you eat a big solid breakfast, you feel more energetic. Well, these ladies do too. So what occurs in this barn is the chickens lay, the most of these chickens lay eggs from the time of 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Now, when you figure all this out, the numbers say that the chickens have lay an egg once every 26 hours. They lay 265 eggs per year. 
the, the average student like yourselves eats 250 eggs. So basically, you have a chicken with your name on it. That's a lot of numbers. I bet there's a math teacher out there right now trying to work up some problems for her students. <laughs> we'll see. Let's take a look at this video where we can find out how an egg gets from a hen house like this to your grocery store in only one or two days. Hi, I'm Billy Hickman, a third generation egg farmer. We're here at our family farm in central Arizona. Let's go inside. Approximately three million laying hens are housed in our environmentally friendly automated hen houses here in Arizona. We take great care of our hens and follow very strict guidelines to ensure they have adequate space, nutritious feed, clean water and fresh air. We have a large flock but we pay close attention to the health of each one of our hens. In fact, we have a team of specialists who monitor the health of each and every bird on a daily basis. Each day our hens lay more than three million eggs. Once the eggs are laid, they are gathered and transferred directly from the hen house to the processing plant. Eliminating the need to move eggs by hand or other equipment reduces factors that might cause breakage and reduces waste. After the eggs are washed, each and every Hickman egg is inspected by both computer and human eye. Once they've been inspected and sorted, they're packed and loaded into refrigerated trucks and delivered fresh to your store. Chances are you're serving delicious fresh eggs to your family just 24 hours after being laid. When we say we provide fresh eggs, we mean it. Wow, it's pretty loud in here. I think I almost missed it when they told us to start. But I, I tell you what, my favorite part of this tour of the farm so far starts right here. We learned about how to get this egg from the hen house all the way to the grocery store, but it's the packaging plant that has captured my imagination. Tell me about this machine right here. Well, I'm so glad you asked. This is the newest member to our farm. This is Big Bill. He's a robot that packs eggs and loads eggs safely and quickly, and it saves on back injury, so you don't have to lift all those heavy boxes all day. He's pretty big and strong. Tell me about how kids can become big and strong just like Big Bill here. Well, you know, it, you are what you eat, so you have to feed your body very nutritiously. And it all starts with feeding our hens nutritious food, which we call feed. Just like Billy said in the video, we take extra care of our hens, and it's the food that makes all the difference. And as a result, you get this beautiful white egg. What's inside of this guy? And is that important? Of course it is. Speaking of nutrition, this has protein that helps build muscles in your heart and for strong bones too. And it's found in the white and the yolk, which is the yellow part of the egg. And I bet you know that minerals and vitamins are important to stay healthy too. And the eggs have a lot of vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D for strong bones. Very cool, but I got to tell you, Big Bill's my favorite. The only Sorry, thing that I have left to ask you about this facility, though, what's with all the recycling signs? I, I see them all over the place. Farmers are recyclers. Egg farms across the country do everything they can to conserve natural resources. And Clint is going to show you in the video more about that. Hi, I'm Clint Hickman, a third generation egg farmer. Our farm is a diverse operation that employs many sustainable and innovative practices. A couple of years ago, we added a hard cooked operation, which generates hard cooked eggs for use in restaurant salad bars and other commercial uses. We can hard cook 8,000 eggs in an hour, and they all come out perfectly. We make the most of our water here on the farm. In our hen houses and on our farm, nothing goes to waste. We started recycling the water used to wash eggs about five years ago, funneling it into an on-site compost operation. That immediately saved us as much as 250,000 gallons of water a month. At our newest location, we built chicken houses to take advantage of the winds, helping to cool the interior using less water and power. Manure on the farm is removed daily, dried, ground, and turned into high-quality fertilizer that we distribute to other agricultural businesses including several organic vegetable farmers in the region for use on their farms and turf. We're always looking to recycle and conserve. Our family believes that a healthy environment is just as important as providing you safe, nutritious eggs. Wow, 
This has been a fascinating journey we've gone on so far. So we've seen how the eggs are laid and where the hens live. We've seen how they've been produced and packaged. Why don't we take a break over here? Looks like a place where some good ideas may be hatched. Awesome. <laughs> we'll have a seat and we have a couple questions for you guys. Awesome. So we've been through a whole lot of information today, Sherman, and I'm hoping maybe you can tell the students what are your top pointers. After they leave today, you really want them to remember these things. Kids, when you leave our farm, just remember that hen health and safety are top priority here. And also, we take great care to make sure they get nutritious food, to make sure they stay strong and healthy like you do at home. And remember, the busiest part of their day, just like you, 7 to 11, that's when our hens lay eggs. And at the grocery store, you can get our eggs from one to two days from when they were laid. Fantastic. Well, as you know, there are students, thousands of students out there, and they've been joining us and submitting questions for, for several weeks. In fact, they're still submitting questions. We received over 1,100 questions, and we encourage you to continue to submit those questions on educationstation.discoveryeducation.com. Let's take a look at a few of those questions here. And some of those have repeated as we've looked through the list. In fact, the number one question that everybody asks, maybe there'll be a different answer here, but which came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> that is the, by far the most popular question that Charmin and I get asked all the time in the community. So as you guys saw, you saw a lot of chickens. So our family and other egg farming families take care of a lot of chickens. So they're our number one priority. But we also sell a lot of eggs around the United States. So the egg's important too. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably the chicken. Egg. <laughs> Some things, especially in family, may never be agreed upon, but that's okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, speaking of familiar questions and questions that come up a lot, one of the questions that came up was, what are egg farmers doing like yourselves to give back to the community? Can you answer that, Charmin? Yeah, across the United States, egg farmers are dedicated to helping a lot of local community efforts. One of which is through the Good Egg Project. Across the, uh, the United States, egg farmers are donating over 12 million eggs per year to the feed the hungry. Wow. And you mentioned about across the United States, another really, really interesting question, and you guys had mentioned this when we were behind the scenes a little. How far might an egg travel when it leaves a facility like this? And where do your eggs go? Well, the egg farmers are highly regionalized. And so, say for our farm, uh, we sell a lot of eggs into Arizona and Nevada. But our, far, our eggs go as far as away as Hong Kong and sometimes even Hawaii. So, thanks, Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii. Now, how do they get there? Almost every two kind of transportation available, for the most part, a uh, refrigerated truck uh, kept at 45 degrees or colder for freshness and quality, but Hawaii shipping container on a boat. Okay, shipping containers. Another question that came up that was really popular was, how come some hard-boiled eggs? Maybe Sherman, this is you. I, I don't know who who owns this question, but how come some hard-boiled eggs are so much more difficult to peel than other eggs are? I'm glad you're asking one of the egg farmers, Kyle. The harder it is to peel, means the fresher the egg. We have a lot of tips. But the fresher the egg, the harder it is to peel. Okay. Well, let's get into our questions because we have a whole lot of questions from the students, like I mentioned. And Sean Harmon, in fact, in grade one at Our Lady of the Lords in Bethesda, Maryland, kind of where I hail from, he'd like to know, why don't the eggs hatch and become chickens? Well, I'll take that one. Okay. Um, there's no roosters at our farm. Um, so the chickens lay eggs without a rooster. So, in order to have ch baby chicks, you need to have a rooster. Seems straightforward. What about, um, uh, this is from Jane, Trinity School in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And I know where my brain goes when I read this question. The question is, how do you grade the eggs? My guess is they're not talking report cards here. I think you know what they mean. That's right. They're not talking flunking. All of our eggs pass with grade double A. Grade double A or grade A is what you'll see in your grocery store, and that indicates freshness. Okay. The third graders at St. Dominic School in New Jersey would like to know, what season do you get most egg production, and what's the hardest job on the farm? So they're coming at you with more than one question. <laughs> yeah. Unfair. They get to ask two. Um, the, the, the season that has the most egg production is usually we really ramp up for the Easter season uh, to make sure our chickens are at peak production. Um, and the hardest job on the farm, I think you saw a glimpse of it, 
my feeling is, I don't know about Charmin, but packing eggs, um, it's a tough job. There are, are ladies that do it and the, the males around the country. That's the hardest job, I would think. Yeah, about you? I tend to agree with Clint on this. <laughs> Okay, how about um, this one coming from Oriole Elementary School in Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. And the question is, what is it like to be an egg farmer? That's a broad uh, question, but you probably each have your own perspectives that you can add. You go first. Well, I'm proud to be an egg farmer because I know that all of our employees and, and my family are committed to donating or to providing fresh, tasty eggs nutritiously and affordably and responsibly for your community. My, my take on it is on an egg farmer, there's so many different facets of, of egg farming, be it with the chickens, packaging, production, distribution. Every single day offers us a new hat to wear that, that we can go out and be in the community and talk about our jobs in every, every single way. And that's true for a lot of the egg farmers out there in this country. Okay, fantastic. We have another question here. This one from Mrs. Berger, Mrs. Berger's class, if you're out there, hello. Mrs. Berger's kindergarten class in Niceville, Florida would like to know, do eggs need to be kept refrigerated? And that makes me think because I have to feel like eggs weren't refrigerated way back when, but there's probably a reason. Well, Kyle, we in the United States, all eggs should be kept refrigerated in your uh, refrigerator 45 degrees or below between 38 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And that maintains freshness. And since we're in the United States, keep them in the refrigerator. <laughs> Fair enough. I like the consistency there. That chicken had to do a whole lot of work, Kyle, to, to get that. So you might as well just keep the eggs nice and cool and fresh. I like that. Put, put the onus on the chicken a little exactly. bit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this question coming from Gateway Elementary School, another school in Florida, Fort Myers. Uh, Mrs. Fogarty's fourth grade class. Do all eggs have the same nutritional value? And I think we've talked a little bit about this nutrition thing, so I, I have a feeling that lots of students are wondering about that. Well, you uh, don't have to wonder any longer. All, eight, all of our hens eat the same nutritious feed. So uh, they are fed nutritious feed, and in turn, that you get vitamins and minerals across the board, no matter if it's cage-free, uncooped, or whatever your preference is. The nutritional components are the same. And in fact, lately, uh, there's less uh, cholesterol and uh, lower sodium in the eggs. Okay. Well, let's scroll down the list here. And I'm seeing one, I don't think we've had a question from Texas yet. Texas, if you're out there, here we go. Addison from Perryton Kinder in Peyton, uh, I'm sorry, in Perryton, Texas. What happens to the broken eggs? Well, we hope that we're doing our best by not breaking any eggs over here. You saw the machinery. It's very important, again, that chicken hard work, we got to make sure that we offer a product that doesn't break. So, however, the eggs that do get broken or hit the floor or there's something wrong, we put them in our farm's compost here. We're really proud of that. So everything has a value to us. Okay. And how do, what are you doing to help, I'm just wondering, with the workers as they're um, you know, preventing that from happening? I think we saw a couple safeguards, but what happens around the farm to try to reduce that waste as much as possible? Number one, no egg fights. There is no <laughs> throwing eggs at this farm. No food uh, fights at school either today, okay? <laughs> but what we try to do is uh, with the feed and with, with things that we put in the feed, like na natural calcium limestone, create shell hardness. So the first time we hope that egg breaks is when mom hits it on the skillet. <laughs> I like that. That's a good answer. Was that coin? I mean, that's just, you know, you guys are great. It's like you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> so another kindergarten class would like to know, um, and this is in uh, Chilhoe, Virginia, Mrs. Hurley's class, would like to know, what do you like best about working on an egg farm? And we've seen that your day could be quite scrambled. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. I had to throw it out there, but what can I say? Uh, that you can be all over the place, but what's the best part of your day? Best part of my day is getting to share our story with people that want to know where their eggs come from, from the hen to your table. And I get to go out and visit with all kinds of people, customers, kids at schools, just like you out there. And also, when I come on the farm, I know it's very safe and people are happy to be here. And I'd say the best part of my day is um, we're blessed, and a lot of us family farmers are blessed to being able to work with each other every day. Um, sometimes we have arguments, just like you guys do at home, but... I can't but, believe that. <laughs> you haven't met my brothers. <laughs> so. 
Well, I hope that I can meet them, and, and I'm sure that you guys are, are uh, you work very well together. <laughs> So what about a question from South Carolina here? You guys can even take a peek at this one here. Um, this is Ms. Mackey's class, New Hope Carolina's Academy. What education background or skills do you need to work on an egg farm? I love questions like this where the students are already thinking about uh, what they might need to do to be prepared for future careers, uh, looking down the road, anytime they're looking ahead, I love that. So what do you guys think? What, what kind of education background, Sharman, maybe you could add on this one? Well, as an ASU marketing student, <laughs> Kyle, I would tell you that uh, math, as you can see, very important, and technology. You, you saw that we can't count that many eggs. We rely on computers and also great communication skills and uh, a sense of community. Community so work. Yeah, you had mentioned community again. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. But oh, that's <laughs> okay. No, well, we'll talk all day about community. <laughs> so, uh, that, uh, and education and continuing your education. We learn something new every day. And we take the most available technology to us and apply it at our farm so everything is efficient and conserve resources for our future generations. And my take on it is, as a University of Arizona marketing major, um, it's so important that School of Hard Knocks kids and experience that you're gaining every day. Um, Sharman and I worked at, had, and have worked on every job on this farm, and we know implicitly what our employees go through every day, and we try to make it a little bit better. I, I, can, I can see that for sure. What about, um, oh, here's a local question. I know you guys have been waiting for this one. So this one's coming from Morincini, Arizona, okay? And the question is from Freddie V in Fairbanks Elementary School. Why do some eggs have two yolks? And I've had that, Freddie, great question, because I've had that happen to me. Well, let me take this one. First of all, it's Morinci, so go miners. Um, <laughs> Morinci, Arizona. Two yolks, just really quick description. Two yolks coming down the chicken getting in the right place and one shell forming around it. But if you get one of those, which are kind of rare, it's your lucky day. <laughs> Go play the lotto, I suppose, if you can. <laughs> I don't think these guys are quite old enough to do that, but um, <laughs> I, I always like it. It's like finding the penny on the, on the floor, right? Heads up. Right, it's going to be the Mom day. Mom and Dad got lucky with their grocery bill. They got two for one. There you go. I like the way you look at that. <laughs> okay, here's a question coming from Mrs. Boyd's second grade class. Holmes Road Elementary School, how, ooh, math question, talking about learning about math, right? How many eggs do you produce annually? Have you done that math? We have just before you got here. Oh, so you're prepared. So that's important too, right? <laughs> Be prepared. Go ahead. Well, this is a math exercise, but as you, you saw in, at our farm, we have just about 3.8 million hens and they lay a, almost an egg every 26 point hours. So you could do the math too. So that would be just under 3.8 million times 365 days. And Clint, since he's a marketing major, he has that answer. I don't, but <laughs> thank you for that. How about this? My answer always is a lot. A lot, a lot of eggs every day. And with those eggs, um, you mentioned community before, but, but I remember that you, you work some programs like the PJs and Eggs program. Can you tell us a little bit more about all those eggs and where those eggs go and, and what you're doing there? Well, we invite annually, uh, over the last three years, we're proud to announce that we've donated over 3,000 new pairs of pajamas and uh, thousands of dollars to help children in need in Arizona for the foster care program. And we encourage you to go out and be a good egg too in your community. Helping those that you want is a good thing and I guarantee you're gonna have a fun time doing it. Okay. And one of the other community involvements, just because we're doing that, but you have the Souter Egg Company that does marathons and Dixie Egg Company and all these other people that come and take little things and donate eggs into those food banks is so important uh, for the entire egg industry to continue to feed this country. Okay, thank you. That's great. Um, another second grader here has some questions from Wilkerson Elementary School in Warren, Michigan. What natural resources do you need to run an egg farm? Well, I'll start. It takes a lot of energy, lots of fuel to get the eggs uh, delivered, um, and lots of, lots of corn, soy meal, um, so commodities for our chickens to eat. Okay. 
can't forget water. We need water, and we, we secure and invest in equipment that uses the least amount of water, and the wastewater is actually used in a different part of our farm for the soil uh, conditioners, too. So we, we don't waste any water. And also, fresh air to breathe for both of our employees and our important employees, the hens. Air, atmosphere, part of the natural resources. Like and that goes back to the, the, the recycling signs that we mentioned. We talk a little bit about recycling, but you're actually reusing, not just recycling, but reusing different um, processes throughout the farm so that you can leave as, as minimal impact as possible. Absolutely. That's right. Okay, fantastic. Um, how about a little bit of a, of a lighter question here? I don't, I don't think I ever found out. What were your favorite ways to cook an egg and to eat an egg? My favorite uh, way is the uh, light scrambled egg uh, smothered under a hollandaise blanket. So egg on top of egg. My favorite is the way my wife cooks them. Whatever she, just <laughs> <laughs> whatever she puts in front of me. But one thing that I've always learned is whoever can make an over easy egg, be it a restaurant or at home, those people know what they're doing. Over easy is so hard to do. Okay, fantastic. We learned earlier in the program about uh, how you're, you're uh, third generation egg farmers. What about, I think the, the students out there, they want to know, what about the fourth generation? Do you have kids and are they working on this farm as well? Well, our kids are both watching and learning more about it at their school today, so hi kids. And our older uh, relatives, nephews, are just about to graduate from college. And they'll get their chance, we know. And they'll get to work uh, directly beneath their, uh, their favorite aunts and uncles and dads. Okay. And I would just like to say on the entire egg industry, because this is the Good Egg Project, we get to learn a little bit more about the egg farmers around the country. And so I've been able to meet other generations of family farmers in Michigan, like the Herbrooks, um, and the Sparbos, they're, they're wonderful families, and a lot of, it's really great to see a lot of generations coming up in this business. Fantastic. Well, we have some more questions from across the country. In fact, this one coming from New Jersey. Um, Corin Wozniki from Lambertville Public School uh, would like to know, how many eggs does a hen lay per year? And I think you guys talked about this one. If they were listening closely, they might have already heard the answer. You. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I should have pointed. Charlotte, can you answer this? <laughs> well, our average hen lays about 265 eggs per year. And that's also based on her age and uh, where she is in her laying cycle, uh, again, according to her age. So we're going to say about 265 eggs per year per hen. Oh, okay, there it is. More math problems for you out there to do. Um, what about water? Because here's another question that just came in. Um, and this one's from. St. John the Apostle Catholic School in Virginia Beach, Virginia. How do you get water and feed to the hens? And I saw that in the videos. I remember that's a pretty slick process. Can you elaborate on that process a little bit more? Sure. Well, uh, as you saw in the, in the videos, you could see the hens get fed six times a day in the trough up in the front. But what you didn't see in the back of the, uh, of the conventional cage is, is the watering system. So the water here on our farm is we have our own wells, and the wells are pumped directly, and that water is pumped directly into the, into the barns. That's true for, in a lot of cases here in the egg industry. Okay. Thank you. Let's see here. Let's scroll through. And I don't think we had this one from, oh, nope, that one already answered as well. How many eggs does the U.S. consume in a year? Okay. That one, though, we should call out to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Everybody say hi to Tennessee. There we go. We have uh, viewers from Tennessee, <laughs> like we told you, all across the country, and they're still coming in. Here's another question, though. Uh, what, uh, oh, anonymous. Okay. They didn't want to tell us who they were, but I think it's a good question either way. How many egg farms are there in the United States? Because you're talking about uh, being a family farm business and seeing generations come up, but are you spread across? Uh, can you, do either of you know that? I have a feeling that you probably do, and, and can you elaborate? Well, we probably do. There's about 58 egg farming families in the United States with about, uh, the average is over 75,000 laying hens or more. Okay. But there's also some smaller farms scattered around the country that you might be familiar with. You might know that egg farm that's just down the road. So um, the more the merrier, I guess. But in Arizona, we're the only egg farming family left in Arizona. When my grandmother started, the count was thousands. Count was thousands, okay. Mm -hmm. well, 
Here, I think this might be one of our last ones here, but Hunter in Reston, Virginia would like to know, what's the average size of an egg? And do those um, egg sizes vary? Egg sizes, there's five sizes of eggs in the grocery store, and the most commonly purchased and the average would be the size large. Okay. That's your average, yeah, right in the middle. And well, there's ahead. jumbos, extra large, large, medium, and small, and the older a chicken is, the bigger egg it lays. So okay, a lot of so people that, didn't know that. That makes that. sense, though. I can see that chicken's getting bigger, eggs get eggs bigger get with bigger too. But 80% of her lifetime, she spent laying large and extra large eggs. That's why large and egg, large and extra large are so popular in the store. Okay, and just for them, one more time, um, the size eggs that you guys produce mostly are large. large. Okay, fantastic. We got that one right. <laughs> Together in unison. <laughs> what about the colors of an egg, though? Because I've seen brown eggs before, I've seen white eggs before. Uh, can you tell the folks out there why are there colors and, and variances in chicken eggs? The, it depends. The color of the shell would be uh, dependent on the type of chicken. Brown, it, pretty simple. Brown chicken lays a brown egg. White chicken, white earlobes, lays white egg. There's really no nutritional difference because they're eating the same feed, but it's really your consumer preference. What about those, those, those pink eggs with the swirls? I saw them a couple weeks ago. Those are like I think those are from eggs. the Easter bunny. Oh, wrong kind of egg. I'm sorry. <laughs> Back on track here. You were going to add to the conversation, no. I think. Well, I was just, just going to say, we're still looking for that green chicken for the green egg, eggs and ham. <laughs> the green eggs and ham chicken. Okay. That's one of my favorite books. Our and we, we definitely encourage the students out there to continue to go out to the library and find all kinds of books on egg farming and on chickens and on hens and things like that. So. Um, to wrap up here, are there any new technologies besides Big Build that you guys are thinking about investing in or bringing to the farm? Absolutely. We never stop investing in technology, just like all the other egg farmers in the United States. It is our obligation to provide safe, affordable eggs and uh, make sure that we feed everybody nutritious eggs. So by do the way we do that is through technology. And we're depending on you kids out there to go in and build things and make things that are going to feed us for the next billion years. Any last advice or tips for everybody out there? I would say if you're eating one egg, might as well eat it, eat two, especially during the summer. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate this. We've had a great journey. What an adventure it's been. And for all of you guys out there, we really appreciate you joining us today. This was brought to you on behalf of Discovery Education and all of the egg farmers across America. We encourage you to go to educationstation.discoveryeducation.com, and there you'll be able to find extension activities for home, recipes to cook, even lesson plans, and more. In fact, our archive of this entire episode and this virtual field trip will be live within a few days. Thank you so much for joining. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Welcome back. We're so glad that you were able to join us on our live farm to table virtual field trip. And we still have Clint and Charmin here, and they're willing to answer some of your questions. So we're going to go through some of those as you've been submitting those live as well. One of the first questions that came from the media here was, Who's sponsoring this and hosting this field trip? I think we have touched upon that quite a few times, but one last time for the cameras, why not? Uh, America's Egg Farmers and Discovery Education are sponsoring us today. Fantastic. And the other question here is, why are we hosting this event? And I think that's an important one. Clint, go ahead. Well, in the spirit of the Good Egg Project, we want to make sure that we want to make sure that people understand where their food comes from, and we're very proud of this farm and very proud of the industry that we're in. So. Straightforward. I like it. <laughs> uh, tell us more. You, you, both of you actually referenced the Good Egg Project as we were going through the virtual field trip. Can you elaborate on the Good Egg Project? What some of the work that you are involved with? Right. Uh, since about 2009, uh, across the country, we've been donating eggs, and it's been a, a, about a total of 28 million eggs to those uh, in a food insecure situation. And as well, we do a number of different local uh, community support efforts to be good neighbors and help the, those that need some help out there. And you're helping them by doing what, specifically? Donating nature's fresh, <laughs> tasty eggs. So you're donating eggs. Fantastic. Another question that's come live is, are cage-free or organic eggs better for you than conventional eggs? Um, no, I, would, I wouldn't say so. I think what, what the difference is is, is basically what uh, we're feeding them. Um, the, 
the egg industry has gone to feed rations that are now actually even uh, creating even more vitamin D content, uh, content in the egg, less cholesterol. So uh, very happy about the nutrition value that you get in an egg. Okay. What are the differences between conventional cage-free or free-range facilities, and is one better than the other? That's, that's a tough topic. Um, we, we here are sitting at a, ca a, a conventional cage facility. Um, I wouldn't say that one is, is necessarily better than the other. You, you can all have your own opinions. What, what we're concerned with is the health and welfare of the bird and also whatever style of housing uh, that the birds are in, that the egg that's, that's being generated has the exact same nutrients and nutritional value for your family. Okay. Anything to add, Sherman? Uh, I think that it's important that the America's Egg Farmer, we're happy to cater to your purchasing preference. So if you want organic, cage-free, free room, you're welcome to buy that at any of your grocery stores by you. And if uh, whatever you'd like, uh, it just depends on your preference, and we're going to provide that to you based on your purchase. Okay, and speaking of preference, what's your preference? What do you guys eat? I eat Hickman local eggs <laughs> as much as I possibly can. Why? Because they're right on the other side of the store and they're free. <laughs> For me. I was just saying, yeah. <laughs> careful there. <laughs> if I move the business model, I thank you for giving things away for free. <laughs> Um, okay, I thought you were going to add anything. Oh, well, I just say you are what you eat, so the n nutritious eggs are very convenient for us, and uh, I prefer the caged eggs because I'm into the safety health component, and I kind of feel like that's better, just the caged eggs. Okay. Can you both elaborate a little bit more? There's some questions out there about um, enriched colony housing. Can you talk or speak to that? Clint, do you know? Yeah, it's kind of hard. We currently have an enrichable cage system here on this farm, uh, which at some point might be enriched. What I would uh, say is a lot of people don't understand what the enriched colony cage is. So go to the Good Egg Project and watch the JS West video with Jill Benson. They, that's great pictures of how those birds are living. Um, and that might be the way our industry goes at some point. Um, and we're, we're very happy. Okay. Thank you. What about this question? Uh, how, uh, I'm sorry, not how, but are egg laying hens given growth hormones? And I think we hear a lot about hormones and, and additives like that um, throughout all of our foods. Anything used like that here? Uh, there have never been any hormones fed to our egg laying hens across the nation. Our hens are fed a nutritional feed. Uh, based in corn, milo, soybean, and other minerals to sustain their long, healthy life here. Okay, so, and when you say long, healthy life here, ever, uh, ever since they were a young chick all the way throughout, there's just not, that's not involved at all in any of the process? Never no. has been. Okay. No. Thank you. And that's true for all, all egg farmers, actually. I know Charmin touched on it, but hormones have never been fed uh, to lay hens to increase or decrease egg production. Okay. Another question from, from out there in the, in the internet land. Uh, how long are eggs safe to eat after purchase? As long as you uh, keep them in your refrigerator and properly handle them, they can be kept four weeks after purchase. Okay, and I think that touches on the consistency mm -hmm. um, issue that we were re referencing when we were in the virtual field trip itself, because as you mentioned, now you are refrigerating um, the eggs and you, you just need them to stay at that same constant temperature. I still can't understand why anybody has eggs get old in their refrigerator. So if you feel they're old, throw them away and buy another dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I think that's all the questions that we have here today, so we really appreciate all of you joining us. And again, we would refer you to go to educationstation.discoveryeducation.com to learn more about eggs, recipes, classroom activities, and everything else. Thank you so much for joining us. Clinton Sharman, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Kyle. Take Thank care. You. Thank you.